June 27, Recording in progress. 2023 Planning Commission meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Daniel Isaacson, and I'm the chair of the Eugene Planning Commission. To begin this evening, I'd like to call on Commissioner Fragola with the City's Land Acknowledgement Statement. Commissioner Fragola. Um, since time immemorial, immemorial, the Kalapuya people have been the indigenous stewards to our region, building dynamic communities, maintaining balance with wildlife, and enacting sustainable land practices. This land acknowledgement is a way of resisting the erasure of indigenous histories and to honor native communities by inviting truth and reconciliation. Following treaties between 1851 and 1855, Kalapuya people were dispossessed of their indigenous homeland by the United States government and forcibly removed to the Coast Reservation in Western Oregon. As we consider the impact of colonization, we also acknowledge the strength and resiliency of displaced indigenous people. The city of Eugene is built within the traditional homelands known as Kalapuya Elihi. Kalapuya descendants are citizens of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of the Silets Indians of Oregon. They continue to make contributions in our communities here and across the lands. We express our respect for the inherent political sovereignty of all federally recognized tribal nations and indigenous people who live in the state of Oregon and across the nation. Therefore, the Planning Commission recognizes that what we do today will affect the many generations who will come after us. Thank you, Commissioner Braga. And thanks for everyone for joining us in this virtual meeting format. Tonight, we are holding a public hearing on proposed amendments to the Land Use Code that will implement the state's climate friendly and equitable communities parking reform requirements. Anyone wishing to participate in the public hearing can do so by following the access instructions listed on the agenda for this meeting. Planning commission meetings can also be viewed by watching the live stream available on our website or on broadcast or broadcast on Comcast channel 21. If you wish to speak or provide testimony tonight, please know that we will begin with the testimony portion of tonight's meeting after a brief introduction from staff. When we have reached that point, staff will provide instructions about the virtual hearing format and how to participate. Before we start, I'd like to let you know a little bit about the Planning Commission and our role in the process. First, we are unpaid volunteers appointed by the Eugene City Council who live and work in Eugene, like many of you. For the Code Amendment Project, we are not the decision makers. Rather, we will review the proposed amendments, testimony, and other relevant materials and make a recommendation to the City, to the city Council. The City Council will hold their own public hearing before making the final de decision on these proposed land use code amendments. We're at large members, which means we have to consider the needs of the community as a whole, as, it, as well as the needs of all groups and neighborhoods. We're also human beings, which means each one of us has our own personal views who make us who we are. But as planning commissioners, we're committed to balancing all of the needs as our community and to make the best recommendations we possibly can based on our policies and our laws for us and for future generations. That can be pretty tough to do, and we know not everyone will agree with every recommendation we make. So as we proceed this evening, we want you to know up front that we are listening and we care deeply about you and our community. We recognize how important these changes are and encourage everyone speaking tonight to do so in a respectful and productive way. Before we start the hearing, I wanna thank everyone again for their patience and flexibility as we work within the, within the virtual uh, meeting format. As always, feel free to contact the staff if there is testimony you were not able to provide or testimony that you wish to provide to the Planning Commission in writing. For tonight's hearing, we'll begin with a brief introduction from Reed Verner and then open the public hearing. Reed? Hello, my name is Reed Verner and I'm the Land Use Supervisor with Building and Permit Services. With me tonight is Lydia Bishop, BPS Division Manager. We're here for a public hearing on the proposed Land Use Code Amendment that would implement the State of Oregon's Climate Friendly and Equitable Communities, or CFEC, 
parking rule changes. Here is our agenda for tonight's brief presentation leading into the public hearing. We're going to start with a quick refresher on the state's rule changes. Next, we'll provide a summary of the public involvement activities associated with the CFEC parking reform project. We'll then discuss a summary of the draft land use code amendments. Finally, we'll outline the next steps in the code amendment process. Eugene has begun a multi-year effort to advance city goals regarding climate action, housing production, and transportation through the state-directed program that went into effect in August of 2022. Several projects will be needed to implement the new rules, and they generally fall into four buckets. Parking, which includes parking reform and preparing for a future with more electric vehicles. Parking is the first component of the CFEC rules to take effect. Tonight's public hearing will focus on the proposed land use code amendment that implements the required parking changes. We presented the proposed land use code amendment at the June 11th planning commission work session. The other CFEC components will follow the parking reform project and include climate friendly areas, which are planning for some areas to have higher density housing coupled with more active transportation facilities that would allow more people to get around without relying on a car. Climate friendly transportation, which includes updates to the transportation system plan, implementing a preferred scenario plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from transportation and updating bike parking requirements. And finally, compact development, which includes updating the land use code to implement pedestrian friendly and compact development standards. As you know, staff submitted and received a six month timeline extension from the Department of Land Conservation and Development specifically to provide additional time to engage with the public on the parking reform project. The focus of the outreach was on centering the voices of historically marginalized community groups and distributing information broadly across the community. The city hosted individual stakeholder interviews, small group conversations, discussions with people at two tabling events, a virtual information ses uh, session, and collected almost 440 online survey responses. Involvement included proactive outreach to communities of color, the LGBTQ plus community, Spanish speaking residents, people experiencing disabilities, neighborhood groups, and folks working in affordable housing, transportation, environment, and development. Most people expressed a preference for removing all off street parking requirements citywide, identifying broad support for reducing greenhouse gas emissions from vehicles and offering the flexibility to use the space previously required for off street parking for other uses, including more dwelling units, open space, or trees. The next portion of the presentation provides a summary of the proposed land use code amendments, which were included in the agenda materials as attachment B. The main change is to remove all minimum requirements for off street parking. Therefore, the majority of the proposed code changes involve removing references to off street parking requirements and other related uh, minimum requirements. The CFEC rules also require reassessing parking maximums, including those for multi unit developments. Prior to CFEC, the city's land use code had parking maximums for non-residential uses, and those maximums were 125% of the minimum parking table calculations. To maintain consistency with prior policy decisions, the draft code applies that 125% calculation for parking maximums citywide for commercial, industrial, and multi-unit residential developments. The proposed code also includes the EV charging conduit requirement mandated by the state. As prior versions of the code were silent on the location of EV charging stations, the proposed code would allow charging stations to be located in landscape areas and in required setbacks if the charging stations are not more than 42 inches in height. Other proposed changes are in line with the state's requirement to allow and facilitate shared parking, to require canopy trees or solar charging for new parking lots more than a half acre in size, and to institute a size limit on total parking area for facilities over 65,000 square feet in size. Now onto the next steps in the code amendment process. Staff recommends keeping the record open until 5 p.m. on July 5th, 2023. Then there are two deliberations scheduled for July, 
The first is scheduled on the 18th and the second is tentatively scheduled for the 25th if needed. The Planning Commission can then make a recommendation to the City Council on the proposed parking reform land use code amendment. A City Council public hearing on the code amendment is tentatively scheduled for September. The land use code amendment must be in effect by December 31st, 2023. Otherwise, the CFEC rules require that the city not apply off street parking minimums citywide as of January 1st, 2024. If you are interested in providing your input on the land use code amendments, you can email written comments to our CFEC parking email or mail written comments to this address. You can also provide verbal testimony to the Planning Commission at this hearing or to the City Council at their public hearing that, as a reminder, is tentatively scheduled for September. Thank you. This includes the staff presentation. I'll now turn it over to Linda Baker for some instructions. Bree, can you stop the screen share? Sorry, Linda, I got too much stuff open here. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I'm Linda Baker, <clears throat> and I'm going to provide instructions on how to request to speak during the public testimony section. You can get in the queue by raising your virtual hand. To do this, please click the raise hand button in the menu if you're joining us on computer, tablet, or smart device. If you're joining us by phone, you must dial star nine. At the beginning of testimony, you should start by stating your name, address, and whether you're in support, opposition, or neutral to the proposal. Public testimony time is three minutes long. I will provide you a time reminder when you have 30 seconds left to speak. And once the time is up, you'll be returned to attendee status. If any technical difficulties are encountered, we'll move on to the next person in the queue and try again after that person's comment. With these questions out of the way, we'll move on to the first person in the queue. And that person is Seth Sadowski. And well, I think we need to open the public hearing first. Oh, we have an open <laughs> <laughs> Which I'd like to do right now. Uh, if you'd like to speak and have not already, raise your hand. Please raise your hand virtually uh, to let, get you in the, in the queue. Uh, testimony presented at this public hearing should be directed toward the applicable approval criteria or other criteria that the speaker believes applies to the decision. The applicable approval criteria for this proposed land use code amendments are from Eugene Code 9, Section 9.8065. In general terms, the approval criteria require that the proposed changes are consistent with the applicable statewide planning goals and the Envision Eugene Comprehensive Plan, the Metro Plan, and applicable adopted refinement plans. Uh, how many uh, speakers do we have in the queue? Let's so see, we have one. We currently have one. Okay. All right, I will promote you to panelists. I think Commissioner Ramey is in the attendees. Oh, never mind. I see him in there. Seth, go ahead. I think you're muted. Hi, uh, this is Seth Sadowski. Uh, let's see, what was I supposed to say? I'm calling to speak in support of the proposal. Um, I'm excited to see that the planning department has recognized that uh, we will we will have plenty of parking and we don't need to require more of it. It's simpler and cleaner to ditch the requirements citywide in every area and every type of zoning. And I wholeheartedly support it. And Seth, what is your contact information, your address? 
uh, three zero. Oh, oh boy, I'm on every list, but I'm at three zero six five Harris Street in Eugene nine seven four zero five. S e t h s a d o f s k y at m a c dot c o m. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for your testimony. And that is the last person that we have in the queue. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for taking the time out of your evening to share your thoughts with us. I'm going to go ahead and close the, the public hearing. Staff has recommended that the Planning Commission continue to accept written testimony until 5 p.m. on July 5th, 2023. Interested parties may continue to submit written testimony after that date, but it will not be considered by the Planning Commission. Instead, the written testimony submitted after July 5th at 5 p.m. will be provided directly to the City Council. I need a motion to extend the uh, uh, public, uh, public comment uh, until 5 p.m. on July 5th. Second like Commissioner Fragola. Yes, I move that um, the Planning Commission hold the record open for an additional week following the public hearing until 5 p.m. on July 5th, 2023. Second. It was Commissioner Lear seconded. Um, all those uh, in favor signify by raising your hand. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Is there uh, is there any uh, commissioners would like to speak um, before we wrap up today? Commissioner Ramey. Thank you. Well, I had a, I missed the uh, work work session, but I did have a chance to review the minutes or you know review the video of that session. And I must say, it's pretty. I feel like I was there. I mean, the technology is is really terrific. So um, I really appreciate having that tool for us. I have I have um, a simple, I have a series of things. One's a simple question, and I don't think they need to be answered tonight unless they're so incredibly simple they can be answered tonight. Um, we talk about redevelopment, and how do we define redevelopment in the code? Is it a percentage of change to the structure? Is it something that just requires a building code? So I'm, I'm sort of curious about someone who has excess parking today and would like to reduce their parking, how would they go about that? I mean, how how much redevelopment do they have to do in order to qualify under the new regulations? Again, I don't think you need to answer that tonight unless it's so obviously um, in front of us. The second thing is about um, parking management programs for residential zones and how we are providing equity in those zones. I have to admit, I'm not really tracking that they've changed a lot over the years. So I'm not sure if we're charging residents for those zones anymore. We're charging only for the permits or or how we're actually even how we would outreach reach out to those. So I'm I'm curious sort of what the program is currently and how we provide equity to people who who may not necessarily understand the systems or in some cases may not be able to afford them. And the third thing is, um, I know, again, very helpful from, from our, our work session, that we're not talking about, and there's the map over Reed's uh, left shoulder there too, we're not talking about many areas, but if it's at all possible, if we could map areas where the R1 is up against C1 or, or some other area where we think there's going to be spillover parking potential, then we could understand what the depth of the problem is. Um, I just, I'm just not aware of what the, I, I'm very aware of how intense use uh, next to low density residential, I'm, under, I'm very aware of what that entails and how that plays out over time. Um, but I'm just curious about where those conflicts might occur across the city so we could see how big of a problem we're, we're looking at or, you know, just understand the nature of it. Um, and then finally, the there was some mention in the work session to a phase two, which would look at how the city regulates its parking on rights of ways. That's beyond the scope of this work, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it, it had to do with going back and looking more comprehensively at, I think you call it an overall master plan for, for transportation. And in that effort, I think it would be worthwhile to look at both sides of the coin. So looking at, at for lack of a better word, protecting residential zones from, from spillover parking from intense uses. But the other side of the coin is the C3 or the small neighborhood commercial areas 
that really need parking on the street. And if they don't have parking on the street, they won't be as viable. Um, and, and it could be ADA parking, it could be drop off parking, it could be pickup parking. And I don't think our code, the way we manage the street parking now, we, we can do that. I don't think we can go into an area and set up a commercial uh, zone parking place for a, for a, a commercial. Oh, Jeff, whether we can set up, Jeff knows the answer to this question, whether we can set that up or whether that would require more sort of comprehensive overhaul of, of city policies. So those are four things, redevelopment, equity, um, spillover areas that we can map those, maybe not. Uh, and then four, what are we doing for the reverse? And we have commercial entities that maybe want to have a drop off or an ADA space out in the street. Do we have any way to do that for them? Thank you for your patience. And I'll, I'll get my answers when I get them. Thanks. Lydia, I believe you were next. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> again, Lydia Bishop here, a BPS director. So Commissioner Ramey, I just wanted to clarify. I know Je Jeff is dying to jump in and talk about the parking stuff. and um, But with regards to your request for sort of the spillover parking, you mentioned C1, but I'm assuming that you're interested in seeing that for all zones, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not just, just C1. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And and it may be as simple as providing a zoning map and, and kind of calling those areas out, but um, we can work to pull something together for the next meeting. That's all I had. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yep. Hello, Commissioners. Uh, Jeff Petrie, uh, Curbside and Admin Services Director, which incorporates parking and uh, a few other things. The uh, a couple of your the residential parking permit zone program, Commissioner Rainey, uh, is very similar to what we see uh, around the campus areas, mostly in downtown. It is a two-hour time restricted with a res uh, permit override. We do have some areas that are a flat $40 per year, and we also have some areas that are uh, around campus that have high demand that are quarterly at $99 a quarter and $150 a quarter. And so zone H and zone B and zone C. Uh, so we do have various models out there. And, uh, you know, really we haven't gotten into further outside the, the core campus, the downtown area. We do have some residential programs up near Sheldon uh, High School to mitigate the student parking in that area. Uh, and some rent, uh, we have some out on Stewart Road to help provide employee parking. So we have a management program that we can roll out. Uh, in terms of equity, it sounds like you're speaking more towards uh, income equity or price points. And right now we're at a fixed $40 fee per year for most areas, unless it's a very high dense uh, uh, area, which is usually the five, 10, 13 story apartment complexes that ring campus that have a higher demand. Um, in terms of the um, uh, the commercial side, uh, we have, uh, we put up any kinds of signs in the right of way. We have 15 minute spaces, commercial vehicle spaces. We have, uh, you know, some areas with like meter parking. There's a lot of options we have. It's an administrative order process. Uh, in West Eugene, we put up a lot of commercial vehicle parking uh, overnight hours or maybe two hour parking during the day to create accessibility and turnover at the curb. So we do have a program there. We do outreach, get feedback, and try to manage the curb uh, as best we can. One of the newer, uh, starting July 1st, we have a new classification. Uh, it's called a neighbor or a neighborhood services officer. We have four regular positions. They are in addition to our parking officers that are primarily downtown to campus and the neighborhood service officers, uh, four regular positions plus four more uh, temporary positions, eight officers whose job is to uh, enforce various codes across the city. So we now have more resources to go outside of the downtown core in a campus area and they are uh, enforcing code across the city regime in the right of way. And that's new as of July 1st as the right position. So thank you. Are there any other commissioners who would like to speak? Okay. Um, it does not, I'm, I don't have it here, but is there anything from staff before we wrap up here? 
All right. Well, thank you all for joining us and speaking tonight. We'll be back on July 18th to begin our deliberations on this item. As mentioned, any written testimony provided by 5 p.m. on July 5th will be given to us, and any testimony submitted after that will be provided directly to City Council. Um, this meeting of the Eugene Planning Commission is now adjourned. Good night.